Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. Let me let you see my coffee cup. This is um, from Roswell, New Mexico. I uh, went there a few years ago. I drove through it. We're driving to uh, Albuquerque and kind of made a detour. We were we went like to Austin and like ended up somehow passing through Roswell. I mean, I wanted to, so we did. A little bit underwhelming, but anyways, I got a lot of cool records to show you um, today. I uh, am I've, I've been getting okay, so I've been getting. This is gonna be surprising to hear, but I've been getting some grails lately, like some mega grails, like never thought I'd ever have mega grails. Um, and there's like a handful of them. There's probably ten, and they're killer top-notch stuff. So. I'm waiting for a couple packages in the mail, but like like maybe once a quarter I'll do like a like a kind of heavy rotations, but Grail edition where it's just all killer stuff. So stay tuned for that. It'll probably be in a week or two. But just like some crazy, I'm telling you, crazy stuff that you never see. So, um, but this is this is just a bunch of really good stuff I've been adding to my collection or stuff I already have. Uh, this is one uh, Buffalo Dead Forever. This is a uh, this, I believe this is Australian Vertigo, um, but Buffalo is a band from Australia. Really good hard rock. Um, they have an album called Volcanic Rock, which is amazing. That's that one you might have seen the cover for. It's it's got a disturbing cover a little bit if you really look at it. But uh, man, some great great hard rock stuff. Uh, great vocals, killer guitar solos. The Vertigo, it's it's the Vertigo mo man. That's that's what they do. Um, staying on the Australian theme, I put this on my Find This Record uh, Instagram this week, but I've had this for a long time. Just listen to it. This is Black Feather at the Mountains of Madness. Black Feather's another really good <clears throat> Australian group. Uh, there's on Affinity Records, but uh, this is really cool. Cool. They were <clears throat> kind of friends with uh, the band Fraternity, which uh, was Bon Scott's band. And so Bon Scott plays uh, like some percussion on this randomly. He's not in the band or anything. He just played it. And then um, <clears throat> there's there's a what's the song called? Seasons of Change that um, the fraternity actually put out a single of that and it did really well. Uh, but Black Feather wrote the song. So really, really good. I mean. Hard rock, psychedelic with a tinge of prog to it. Just really amazing record. This is one, if you like guitar stuff, you probably like all my recommendations, but this is one I highly recommend. Um, I think the originals were only put out in Australia, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, another one, this one just came out, and I've been seeing a few people post about it. Neil Young, uh, Carnegie Hall, 1970. Man. You know, I you guys know I'm a big Neil Young fan. I like every era of Neil Young. Neil Young's incredible, um, in my opinion. Incredible songwriter, um, obviously. But I love Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Um, I love Crosby, Stills and Nash without him. I love him with him. Um, I actually think they might be better without him. But he is a phenomenal songwriter. Um, and this era of his like acoustic shows that he did are just amazing i can't get enough of them so this is a really good release and i love that it's like fashion after the old bootleg covers you know it just looks like an old bootleg but it is really really good so if you like that type of thing uh, and you've seen this floating around grab you a copy so um funny story the other day i was listening to um this record it, it had just like just came out maybe it was a couple weeks ago and uh down by the river is the first song on here um and it starts off I'll be by my side, I'll be by your side. And like that first like verse is so it hits me so hard. I don't know why. It's just so good, man. I mean, it's so sweet. And if you listen to it like when it first came out with Christ Still Nash and Young, it was a totally different vibe to the song. But with that album it, it, it puts it in a real acoustic, like heartfelt, uh just totally different context. Um, it, really, really neat. So anyways, then right after I played that record, I found this record. I bought a collection and it had some cool stuff in it. And this is the Undisputed uh, Truth, Cosmic Truth. And on this record, 
The second song on here is Down by the River, and it's a cover of that song. But it's like psychedelic funk. It is so good. Oh my gosh. I can't say that the Neil Young is a better version. This is so good. And so I kind of went down a rabbit hole. Um, like uh, Buddy Miles did a really cool cover too. But this cover on here is the best cover I've heard. Absolutely incredible. Down by the river. It's got. It's just got some killer um, psychedelic funk guitar solos and stuff in it. I'm telling you. But this is a really, good, really cool album. If you like that type of thing, like the funkadelic, um, you know, maggot brain type stuff, uh, black murder stuff like that. This, this undisputed truth. These records are cheap. They have a few that are cheap and they're really good, like space funk with that psychedelic fuzz guitar. Um, highly recommended. I think this is like a $15 record or something. Really really outstanding i loved it then a couple of days later i've had this record for a month or two and just got around to putting it on this is uh georgia profits uh this is one that's kind of a private press uh south carolina record but these guys basically did i think i think almost everything on here is a cover uh but they did some acoustic things but a lot of like really good like rocking fuzz guitar covers and the first cover on here is down by the river by neil young and so it's like everywhere i turn boom 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 but this is a really cool record if you can find it it's the type of thing i probably wouldn't go around like go online and try to get one but if you're around the area and you see one they're they're worth like 75 bucks i think something like that they're they're worth some money but um but but they're actually really good covers but they're all covers but it's a it's a it's a really cool little private press thing the georgia prophets from south carolina uh anyways um another one i got this week is uh, here's little richard somebody brought it in in a collection and this is on the specialty label this is a first press which is super tough to get um this isn't a perfect copy but it it's it's decent you know i don't know that you could find a perfect copy of this album uh I've never seen a clean one. I've never seen one that's like near me or even VG+. Plus. Uh, but this one's the cleanest one I've ever seen. And uh, thrilled to have it. The first copy I found, I found in a garbage can. Um, I, I, I made a, a video. This is a deep cut. Like when I first started, I made a video about records I found in, a dump, in dumpsters. Because I used to go dumpster diving behind record stores and stuff. And I found a bunch of really cool stuff. But anyways, this is a really cool record. And I, I wanted to... Um, also say that there was uh so a good comment i got i do read all you guys comments i try to reply but sometimes i get a little bit behind but uh there was a good comment that someone said had i ever heard of esquarita which is uh this guy uh i think he uh, so somewhere in south america i think it's mexico but he 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 looks just like Little Richard, and if you look up his record, there's a picture of him doing something similar as this. But he has like a little bit taller hair, and he has like sunglasses and stuff. But he looks exactly like Little Richard. And if you listen to his music, the styling is exactly like Little Richard. But it predates Little Richard. And Little Richard actually, in some interviews, um, had said that he kind of pulled from him, and he pulled from a couple other people too. But um, but look it up. The record's worth a lot of money, but it, you could tell like holy crap, he's like stole the whole look man but it's called Esquadita. really cool so whoever commented that thank you that was a really good a little really good point of reference there um this is one i just thought i would show uh you guys have just i'm not gonna pull them out but you've heard the band mighty baby i talk about them all the time um their first record is mind-blowing really good uh their second record um let's see so this is i'm trying to remember what year this came out i don't know it doesn't really matter but their second record is more like has like more of an eastern vibe to it like it has some like sitar action a little bit eastern folk type of feel to it but still really killer rock um but it's more on the eastern folky side if that makes any sense uh they got involved in some sort of uh the sufic order of the Shamalama ding dong. I don't know how to say that. But anyways, some sort of um eastern religion. They got they got involved in some sort of religion and it, that that brought them to all these like um different musical stylings. So, this record I believe is 
maybe before their second one or maybe shortly after. I think this is right before their second one. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe um, this one is slightly before. But anyways, this was recorded in 1972, so it's well after their first one. doesn't matter. But this is Mighty Baby. This is uh, called The Habibaya. If you don't like uh, Indian classical type of music, do not listen to this record. This is a very Indian influence. There's no Mighty Baby flair to this whatsoever. This is just totally Indian music. Um, it's cool, it's interesting, but it's these guys basically fooling around with a bunch of like uh, sitars and those weird drums with the rubber on them. Can't remember what they're called. But I have played around with them and they're fun. But, the, but it's, a, it's a cool record. It's interesting. But it's not going to be one I'm going to be listening to a lot. I own it for the Mighty Baby tag. So uh, kind of a cool record. I think this is worth like 20 bucks. But it's just, you know, it's something that I picked up recently. I've kind of been looking for it. And I won't lie, when I listened to it, I was a little disappointed. Because I wanted that Mighty Baby. I hate that they do this. But like a lot of mugs... Like, unless you're left-handed, the other people... I don't want to... I don't need to see what's on the front. Like, I know what it says. Like, your your mug, you need to either have it on both sides or to where you're holding it with your right hand because I'm, like, holding my right hand, bring it, and you're like, who was a neon green mug? And I'm like, boom. Anyways, sorry. That's just a little pet peeve of mine. I also hate it when people drink while they're trying to show um, records. So this is uh, Beverly Glenn Copeland. This is a recent Vinyl Me Please release uh this is a like singer songwriter very much in the vein of Joni Mitchell and um Karen Dalton stuff like that I was really surprised when I got this and listened to it I was blown away Vinyl Me Please does a really good job of uh first of all like really high quality stuff I, I, you guys all know that probably very high quality releases they do not cut corners they do not skimp all their stuff is top notch. Like the releases are great, but also like with the classics. Well, well this is this is essentials. Uh, I'm on the essentials track, so um, the essential and, and you could swap. Like if you get on there, you could swap if you don't like what's coming up. But actually, like I probably would have swapped this because I didn't know what it was, uh, and I didn't realize and it. And it got sent to me. I'm like, crap. I don't. I don't know if I want that. And I listened to it and I was like, man, I'm glad I got this one. So if you're able to swap and you see this one, get it. It's really really good. So if you like that Johnny Mitchell, like Karen Dalton type. Um, it's, it's, it's like soul, it's, well, it's like soulful folk, very, very good. I mean, it's outside the popular vein a little bit, but it's really, really, really nice. It's a very, very beautiful record. I would definitely, definitely recommend grabbing it. Um, this is one kind of interesting. It's called a uh, puzzle. Uh, I ended up, so this was 10 years ago, probably. Uh, I was at a Goodwill and, um, Never find anything at Goodwill, but once in a while. And I found this at Goodwill for a quarter. And uh, took it home, put it on. I was like, it's pretty good. And I posted a picture of it on Instagram. And this was like in the early days of Instagram. And somebody said, ooh, I want that. Can you sell it to me? I'll give you 60 bucks for it. I'm like, heck yeah. Ripped that joker off the turntable and shipped it out. 60 bucks, no problem. And uh, since then, I've been kind of looking for one because it was really good. And so a few, a couple months ago, I, I was buying picking through a collection and got this so i've been listening a little bit but really good psych with some fuzz guitar um and like i don't think they've gone up i think that i think this is somewhere between 40 and 60 dollars but it's got it's got that uh you know it's really cool die cut cover very cool psych record so if you're looking for a psych record that's not going to totally b just break your bank puzzle is a so it's a good choice uh, this is one i got it from the same collection this is gabor zabo dreams um, oh, oh, Gabor, I'm not 100% sure I'm saying this name right, but, um, he put out a couple really good, like, uh, psychedelic type of records. Now, they're not, like, really super far out there psychedelic, but he's known for, like, jazz guitar type stuff. But a little bit more fusion-y, sometimes throw a little bit of psyche psych in there, a little bit more funky in there a little bit too. So, he, he kind of does it all, but there's one called Sorcerer that's really good, but this is the one, man. This one is destroyed. Like, the record is real rough um, condition, but it plays like a dream. I mean, it's it looks it looks worse than it plays. I'll say that. I won't say it's destroyed, but it, it looks worse than it's played. The cover's really nice. But anyways, these have been, gone up so much, man, in the past few years. 
I remember seeing one at a record show for like 50 bucks, and I was like, man, that's crazy. But now they're going, like, clean ones are going for like 100, 150, 200 bucks. Crazy. But anyways, this one is not super clean, but I'm glad to have a copy. And it plays, like, my turntable is super sensitive. It plays great on it. It has some pops and ticks and stuff, but no problem. And I don't really care. If it, if it plays good, I'm happy. So this is a really, really good uh, record. It's got, like, such a good uh, chilled-out vibe. The instrumentation on it is incredible. Uh, highly, highly, highly recommend checking this out. Uh, next one. Just got an upgrade of this. This is a Joseph Stoned Age Man. I've had this record for a long time, and Buddy Hunter uh, was selling some things, and he hooked me up with this. Really nice um, uh, up upgrade copy for me. Mine was kind of beat up. But this is, like, nuts. This is a crazy record. Wild, wild and crazy. The guy who recorded this, I'm trying to remember the story now, but um, I think that they pulled together a band last minute, and they went up to some recording studio and they recorded this joker on the fly like he wrote this like as he was doing it on the fly i believe or that day or something it was something like that you have to I'm, i didn't research but i'm remembering the story that way and they recorded it in one session and the songs are great i i can't imagine writing it on the fly the songs are really good but the guy seems like you know jim morrison's kind of a nut the guy seems like Jim Morrison, like, times 10 on the nutty scale. Like, super nutty Jim Morrison, but, like, crazy, psychedelic uh, madman. And it's really, really, really good stuff. I love this record so much. It's, it's, it's gone up in value. It's kind of hard to get, but this is a really fantastic record. Um, worth getting. This is one I'd never heard of before. I bought some records from a friend. Um, and this was in there. This is called Taco, Taco, Taco. This is Yugoslavian Prague, but... Very enjoyable. I don't think it's worth a ton, but very enjoyable. Um, just like prog rock with the great synthesizers. Kind of real spacey. Uh, but that's a really cool one I thought I would show from Yugoslavia. Um, this is a really cool one. I should have showed this in the beginning. This was uh, Miguel Abuelo and Nada. Um, this was... Uh, it's Miguel Abuelo et Nada. But this... Miguel Abuelo uh, was a musician, I believe, from Argentina... Um, somewhere in that vicinity, I can't totally remember. I think it's Archie. But he was together with uh, Papo, which Papo's Blues Papo. And they actually started Papo's Blues together. So he was kind of a founding member, but they didn't call it Papo's Blues yet. And so uh, he kind of realized that Papo was kind of venturing more towards like psychedelic blues rock. And he wanted like to go more towards like the fusion prog type of so they kind of split before it really became so before the first record they split uh but man this is a killer record very very good um th so this actually they only made these they only pressed these in france for some reason i don't know but fantastic um like psychedelic uh with the pro with like a prog you know leaning to it a little bit but um really great songs and it's a lot more and i don't say this in a bad way because i love papa's blues like it was my own child but um it, it's not like it papa's blues is pretty straightforward blues rock but real nasty real nasty guitar on it you know uh very it, i mean it's mucho above average for blues rock very unique very good stuff but this has m such a more diverse feel to it but it still kind of has the feel of papa's blues so uh the guitar styling that like almost Carlos Santana feel, Popo feel, guitar styling, along with uh, a little bit more prog, folk leanings to it as well. So very, very, very good record. If you like that South American uh, psych and, and prog and stuff, I need to do an uh, updated video because my psychedelic, my South American psychedelic collection is getting tight. Um, let's go through the uh, same, same vein here. Uh, this is called Dias... Um, Dies Ire, D I E S space I R A E. This is Italian prog, and it is super good. Man, this is killer. Italian prog. This isn't the best copy, but uh, I got it on the cheap, so the cover is how it sounds. It's like freaking killer. And there's a whole like there's so many little pockets of psych and prog 
There's so many different flavors, like the South American Psych and Prague, they have its own, like, own flavor that's influenced by, like, you know, uh, uh, Cuban and, 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 like, all these different types of rhythms and stuff like that. But then, like, you know, you have Italian Prague, has its, like, its own specific taste to it. It's like its own little dialect of Prague. It's very, very, very good. But that's a killer record. Um, so once you get down those rabbit holes, all those different types of Prague and stuff, it kind of gets out of control. Um, here's one. I've, I've been wanting a good copy of, of Boston self-titled. This one's in the shrink with all the stickers. So that's obviously grew up on this record. Um, but with common records like that, I kind of have to have a really nice copy of it to justify keeping one because I got so much other stuff in my collection. Uh, this is one I really like. It's Frank Zappa, Waka Jawaka. Uh, hot rats this is a white label promo got from a friend um, I've been trying to get a little bit more of the Frank Zappa stuff that I really actually like uh, because a lot of it I really actually don't like and I don't keep but this is a killer killer uh, Frank Zappa record his guitar is on point chirping crickets um, this is a uh, buddy Holly so I think you know this is one of those records I've been wanting to find original for a long time but they're just kind of hard to find clean this is a decent copy, uh, but you know a lot of people say the Beatles kind of. A lot of people say that they contribute the Beatles of being the most influential uh, musicians. Uh, of, you know, but they built everything that they knew off of what they knew before. Which Buddy Holly was a huge innovator that now I don't think gets enough credit. Um, so Buddy Holly's great. Um, gotta have it. A uh, couple more. This is new Brandy Carlisle record is really good it's called in these silent days um i don't know if they're all on gold vinyl but mine is incredible record if you get around to grabbing one i got a ton in the shop if you're around that's a it's a really good record and they're not like crazy 40 dollars prices i think they're like 20 something um and then last but not least well actually i'm gonna set it for the next video thank y'all so much for watching uh and i got to go we'll see you next time